Hello, in this video we're going to derive the mode of an inverse gamma distribution and also calculate the distribution of a constant times an inverse gamma distribution. These will come in handy in a playlist that I have called parameter estimation and, and actually uh, generalized linear models regression and when I get to those videos I'll point back to this video. So this is the density for an inverse gamma distribution. And one note here is that the beta parameters are in the, I'm going to say, denominator. Some people like to put them in the numerator. And both are 100% equivalent representations of an inverse gamma distribution. Now to find the mode, we take the derivative and then find its maximum, which is the, the mode. So if we take the derivative. And then here, this is a constant, so we keep, I'll just pull it out front. And then with respect to x, so we have two functions, so we have to take the derivative of this times that plus this, which is this, times the derivative of that, which is this. And don't forget the chain rule associated with this. Now we want to set it equal to zero. So we, um, I factor out these constants, or not constants, but these uh, uh, terms, and this is left over. Now, this is, uh, since, since all these have to be positive, every one of these is positive. So we can divide it to the other side, and then we're left with this piece here. And then we, I subtract that to the other side. And then uh, multiply the x, divide by the x plus 1, and we get this. And this is the mode of an inverse gamma distribution. Now the second property is if we have an inverse gamma distribution, alpha and beta, and we let y equal beta times x. And really this can be any constant, but beta times x. And then we, we can you know, back solve for x and then find the Jacobian of the transformation. So then the density becomes this. It's, it's, it's the function of your inverse gamma, but you plug in this value for your x. So then it, since it was 1 over x and you plug in x, then it becomes beta over y. Uh, here, when you plug it in, you get some cancelization. So it's just minus 1 over y, and this is the Jacobian. Absolute value of the Jacobian, but it's already positive. So this beta, there's alpha of them, and so you get a cancellation there. There's one left, but that cancels with this. So we're just left with these terms here. But this is actually an inverse gamma of alpha 1. And so the, the, the take-home message is if x is an inverse gamma alpha beta, then a constant times it is you essentially divide it this value here. So we're taking beta divided by beta, which is 1. But if this were k, then it would be beta k is the inverse gamma. And again, I'm going to uh, point back and reference this video in later videos. Well, that's all I have for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.